Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Future Leaders in Philadelphia. I'm your host, Derek Sawyer. We bring you this show in order to highlight young people in our community, along with local organizations who are striving to make Philadelphia a better place. We want to focus on our next generation of leaders. On today's episode, we will be talking to students run Philly Style, a nonprofit that has helped over 4,000 students in the city see their potential through distance running and mentorship. From March to November, students are run running leaders trained together for major races, like the Philadelphia Marathon. The program aims to teach students that no matter what challenges they face, both in and out of school, they are able to overcome adversity and be successful. In 2016 alone, students run worked with 56 schools and groups around the city of Philadelphia to help students learn through being active. For our first segment, I will be joined by two staff members from the Students Run Philly Style Office. Later in the program, I will be joined by a student involved in the organization. Joining me now are Program Director Lauren Kobelar and Community Partnership and Special Projects Manager Amanda Collette. Welcome to Future Leaders in Philadelphia. Thank you. Thanks for having us. No, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. So let's start off by talking about how the both of you decided to use uh, running as a way to mentor students. So Students Run Philly Style was founded in 2004, um, and this organization has, in the past 12 years, grown a lot. Um, and the two of us joined the staff in the last couple of years, and um, really this was started as a way to address childhood obesity in Philadelphia. In 2004, um, Philadelphia was one of the highest ranked cities in childhood obesity rates and um, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation gave a grant to um, an organization here in Philly to take a model that started in LA called Students Run LA and bring it to Philadelphia and see if it could work. So our founder, Heather McDaniel, um, really built this organization from the ground up and um, Amanda and I both actually started volunteering with the program as running leaders, as volunteers that work with the kids. So what we do is we pair adult volunteers to coach teams of students at high schools and middle schools in Philly to train for distance races. So they train for the Broad Street Run, which is the largest 10 mile race yes. in the country, proudly here in Philadelphia. And then um, they train for the Philadelphia Marathon, which happened a couple weeks ago. Um, so for nine months, our kids work with mentors. They spend 10 hours a week with them. Um, they train really hard. They spend a couple of days a week and uh, they work together and really show kids that they can do whatever they put their mind to. And um, I guess the kids really show themselves that more than anything. Right. So are you both runners? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And since 2004, have you seen an impact on childhood obesity? So we have, over time, our, um, our results and our surveys have shown that um, BMI decreases overall. We see a trend towards decreasing BMI. Um, but also over time, we've seen that while we've had health impacts with students, we've also had huge impact on building self-confidence and character and goal-setting skills. And um, that's been, in the last couple of years, something we've seen tremendous growth in. So well. why is that important? Why is that important? Um, well, I think that uh, how many people have run a marathon? How many people right. have done something like that? And when I believe our students see that, that they can do something that so many people haven't done, it shows them that they can really do anything and achieve whatever their goal is in running, in life, in school, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly something that you hear from the students time and time again. They'll say, oh, you know, I have this really you know, difficult paper to write right. or this concept of going to college or something like that, but oh, I've run 10 miles or 13 miles right. or 26.2 and you put yourself through, I mean, running a long distance race is as much mental as it is physical yep. and you put yourself through something like that and suddenly those challenges that kind of flare up out in life don't seem as tough. That's right. Yeah. That used to be in my bucket list to run a marathon. Mm. I ran, oh, yeah. Yeah, I ran distance in high school. Mm but never more than two miles, mm -hmm. a two-mile race. Stay very fast, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's a good thought. So what values do you instill as you're going through this process of running and mentoring? Sure. Well, the program values are courage, effort, and respect. So it starts with the courage, you know, to, to show up, to say maybe I've never run farther than a block or right, two blocks, right, right. Um, and to really commit 
to, uh, to getting to that final goal. So that's where the respect comes in, that you respect the work that it takes to get there, you respect the people on your team, both your mentors and your teammates, and then the effort is showing up, right. practice after practice, week after week, and then what becomes month after month to really get you to that finish line. But it's all, it's all the students, you know, this is not mom and dad saying it, this is not right. their teacher, this is the student saying, I'm, I'm gonna do this, because they're the only one who in the end is gonna run that race. You have a good point. You know that running requires that constant, because you don't get better if you take off mm -hmm. and you're not consistent. So what are some of the things you do to motivate the students to remain consistent over weeks, months? Mm -hmm. So during the year we do, we run multiple races. So they have mm -hmm. these big goal races, but along the way there are shorter ones. So we kind of set milestones for them along mm -hmm. the way. So part of it's that, I think. Um, and then something I think Students Run does really well is it brings together those students who may not know each other in the beginning as a team. And so I think a lot of our students motivate one another um, and really like keep that spirit alive throughout yeah. the year because nine months is a long time mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but we see our students come together and become like a little family and and supporting each other the whole way mm -hmm. um, we also do programming in the summer for them we have a lot of stuff that we do throughout the year to keep it interesting and keep it fun um, you know not all of it is just running laps around a track right. so right. Um, different places mm -hmm. to run and things mm -hmm. like that and we're providing this to the students at no cost to them. That's big. Which is, which is huge, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we're committed to, that you know, this is accessible to anyone. You don't have to be able to pay for a race or we give them shoes, like things like that, so that anyone can show up to this and be part of it as long as they're willing to put in that courage, that effort, right. and that respect. So is Philadelphia the only city that has this type of program? So the students run LA, is, so there's a program in LA, mm -hmm. uh, there's a program in Philly, and then there are multiple programs now around the country that are kind of modeled off of, right. I think us and Students mm -hmm. from LA, mm -hmm. um, kind of cropped up different. So we're the only one that, those are the only two that are called Students Run right. Philly or Students Run LA, but um, there's a program in New Orleans, a program in DC, a program in Chicago. Uh, it's starting to become mm -hmm. pretty popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is the Philadelphia program any different or are they modeled the same? Um, there are different they're variations. Slightly different. Yeah, yeah. And some some of them work with different populations. Um, right. We are powered by volunteers, and eighty percent of our volunteers are teachers. But not everyone who is involved in the program is a mentor, is a teacher. So uh, that makes us a little bit unique in some of our scheduling. Some of the other programs around the country are very much about running it during school time in the school with the teachers. Right. Right. Maybe they don't run an actual marathon, but they run a cumulative marathon. They run miles over a period of time that adds up to it a certain mm -hmm. distance. So slight variations, but I think the core thing is still there. This like really hard effort that has to go into it and then the accomplishment and the achievement and then you know, building a healthy, healthy lifestyle or you know, growing habits that way too. So students are exposed to that. Hopefully it's a longer lasting. Right. So you're talking to a student now, they're watching the show. What can they expect by getting involved in this program? If, if there's someone watching the show, I, you know, I think that they can expect to do something that, that is just an incredible experience in the end. Something that's really hard, but knowing that something, someone's going to be with you and running right alongside you. Right. Um, this is really different than a track program at your school or mm -hmm. um, most sports teams where you have a coach and the coach tells you what to do and you go do it and the right, coach right. watches. This is an adult that really cares about you and is going to do it along with you mm -hmm. and will be there literally physically every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of things where, where you have that adult doing it right alongside you. Um, and I think that that's just something really special that happens in our program. And I think people, one of the things our students like the most, yeah. How does the school become involved? Schools, uh, like, like Amanda said, it's completely free to schools, free to students. Um, really, we just we ask that the schools kind of contact us and we'll get them set up and ready to go. Um, all of our schools need to have at least two adults that are willing to kind of lead the team and be part of the team. Um, and beyond that, we just ask that they commit to our values and attend our trainings and um, really participate fully in the program. So, well, so by doing that and becoming involved, what would they expect? What can they expect to what type of results can they expect? Mm -hmm. The adults? The school. Oh, the school. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the school, I think our schools see that our students become more involved in their school, more involved in their community. Um, we have seen mostly our academics results go Good. up because mm -hmm. they become, 
uh, our kids become more engaged. disciplined and more engaged yeah. and more interested. And um, in a lot of our schools, our teachers in the schools are also the mentors in our program. So we see grades in those classes go up. We mm -hmm. see the kids just want to be part of something and really be proud of what they're doing, which is always a good thing. So your nonprofit, I'm, I'm, ass I'm assuming that you have volunteers working your organization. What does the person that wants to volunteer have to do to volunteer? Mm -hmm. well, we have a couple of different ways you can volunteer. So there's the, the volunteer mentor, which is a big time commitment. And that's, mm -hmm. again, something we would talk with you about. Um, we certainly have day of volunteer opportunities. So we put on events throughout the year where we need help. Whether it's a training run, we do one in the fall, it's 13 miles. We put on our own half marathon for the students and we need help with handing out water and marshalling the course and that kind of stuff to um, helping us right now. We're packaging up the um, end of year gifts that we give to our students at an event this weekend. So we're wrapping things and putting cards on it and stuff like that. So we have lots of ways you can volunteer um, or get involved uh, as a fundraiser for the students run we have charity bibs for the Broad Street run which is always a sellout race um, right. so if you don't get into the race you can make it for a good cause and then while you're running see you know thousand young people running alongside you who are part of the funds that you're raising right. That's um, nice. so we have opportunities like that where people can get involved and you know we're forming friends committees and things like that so it's definitely worth checking out our website to learn more and to get on our mailing list and to contact members of our staff so since you mentioned your website, what is that website? <laughs> it's studentsrunphilly.org. Um, or if you just do a Google search for any variation of our name, it should pop up. Great. Mm -hmm. So I did look at your website, and I noticed that you have running leaders. Yes. How good of a runner do you have to be to be <laughs> a running leader? That's a great question. That's a good question. Um, because our students, for our, most of them are starting at the first level of this you don't have to be any specific level of runner you can be a beginner you can have run multiple marathons or you can be running your first block too and the beauty of that is that you're learning with the kids when right. you're doing that so there is no experience necessary really what we look for is the um, willingness to commit the time mm -hmm. and the effort and to really want to be there with the kids mm -hmm. and to want to stick with it till the end so um, no experience necessary to do don't have to be fast nope, nope. We're really we're a non-competitive program. Nice. Uh, we we don't uh, race against one another. We race against ourselves. So um, absolutely, doesn't matter how fast you are at all. A lot of our volunteers have actually started running as part of this program and have now run multiple marathons and have become running to become yeah. a big part of their lives. Yeah. Amanda is one yeah. of those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how many marathons have you two ran? So we both just finished our 10th and we actually Ten? ran it on the same day. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Ten both marathons. of ours are 10th. Mm -hmm. Not all with students. Not all with but, students. Um, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's, ten, still a, yeah. that's still a, a major accomplishment. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> once, once you run one, you're, I, I think you're either, I want to do that again or that was nice. Either way, right? <laughs> did it. Check. Yeah. So again, you're a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And as a nonprofit, if someone wants to donate to your cause, how do they go about donating? You just go right to that website. There's a donate button right on any page you click to. You can also call us, put a check in the mail. We like mail. But there are <laughs> lots of different ways you can donate. We're actually um, doing a clothing drive right now at Philadelphia Runner, which is a local running store who's been a partner since we started in 2004. Um, they have four locations in the area, Center City, University City, Maniunk, and Glen Mills, and they're taking warm, I'm sorry, cold weather clothing, so hats and gloves and pants that we will then give to our students because those are some of the needs that they have that we just can't provide. So lots of different ways. It doesn't have to be monetary. Right. We certainly are looking for lots of different ways you can donate. That's good to know. You heard it. Right Donate, here. donate, donate. <laughs> so you launched uh, Race to College, right? Yeah. What's that about? So the Race to College is something we did this summer for the first time. Uh, and really what that was about is um, showing our students that different universities, Philly is a great place yes, for, for universities, universities and colleges. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we said, you know, we run, we're running all summer. We're running anyway. We're starting, you know, that's when our mileage starts to build up. Um, why don't we kind of put this uh, in a way where we can bring kids to different colleges and let them see it and see the campus. And a lot of our students really had We've, we've heard that, you know, oh yeah, I know that this school is there, but I've never been there. And I didn't feel like I could just walk in there and know what right. this was. Mm -hmm. So um, we did it on the run. So we, we took them 
Uh, we did two different weekends, and um, the first weekend we ran um, to Temple University and Community College of Philadelphia. It's a nice little two loop. Two schools, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, at each school we had someone from the school talk to the students, and they got a little tour of the school. And then we had some of our former runners talk who go to that school. So at Temple we had Temple students that are students run alumni there to talk to our students. At CCP, we had the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we did that one weekend, and then um, we talked about, we ran to Rutgers Camden a second weekend and talked about what it's like to go to a school out of state, what right. that means, right. and what are the financial implications of that. So for each one, we tried to build in an educational component. Um, it was new for us this year and something we definitely wanted to do again next year. I think we had about 100 kids at each one. Um, and in the summer, it's hot, so it made it nice to have a couple little breaks in between, mm -hmm. and I think everyone had a pretty good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That well, was our race to college. Just so you know, I graduated from Community College of Philadelphia. Nice. So there you nice. go. I'm glad you picked that one. That's mm -hmm. one of your schools. Yeah, yeah. We, we want to do more next mm -hmm. year. This was the first time, and it'd be great to, to go to some other places, it too. But mm -hmm. they, were, they were great. They, yeah, CCP was great. They came out in big with balloons and, and full force, yeah. snacks, all kinds yeah, of stuff for us. Great. Yeah, so you talked about earlier about childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other health benefits to having a student participate in this type of program? Mm -hmm. So beyond that, um, we see that a lot of students, it helps them reduce their stress levels. Um, mm -hmm. Being a high school student and a person these days is a very stressful thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen more and more students turning to this as a coping mechanism, um, as a way to just reduce their stress, a way to try to kind of let go and be in their own mental space. So beyond some of the physical health aspects, we've seen a lot of changes lately in mental health um, mm -hmm. aspects, um, mostly through just generally hearing anecdotes from students. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, it's a great stress reliever. Um, it's a great way to kind of help, you know, chill out mm -hmm. when things get overwhelming and hard. And um, I think that's probably. I mean, I think that absolutely you'll see too the students who continue to run after they graduate out of the program. Right. Um, right. We had a young man who spoke at our one of our events mm -hmm. this year who is a program alum, went to Penn State, and came back to Philadelphia to run the marathon. You know, and he's still running and he's still running distance, which is really nice to see too. Yeah, and it, is. it kind of flows out into the community. So you might see parents who get involved, whether they start running or, or run walking or something like that, or younger mm -hmm. siblings who come up through the program because their older brother or sister did it, mm -hmm. which then, you know, if you think about it, can keep going and going right. and going out into yeah. the community, which is really nice. And I think since we started, you know, we've seen that change too. Like this is something that now we have thousands of middle school and high school kids running long distances here in Philadelphia, where 15 years ago, no kids right. in Philadelphia were doing that. So it, it just like Amanda mm -hmm. said, it's, it's, I mean, in some ways it's a movement and a shift culturally towards embracing this type of sport um, for a lot of our kids and a lot of their families too. Mm -hmm. This sounds like such a great program. Are there any plans to expand it to other cities? Um, I think, we're, you know, we're interested, but we haven't quite That's committed it. to doing that mm -hmm. yet. We really want to, you know, we're, Philly is our home, um, and we, you know, we're open to exploring that future. So before we wrap up, I believe you have a charity, charity event. What type, tell us about the charity event. Charity event. Right? So our next big charity event will probably be the Broad Street Run charity okay. entries, um, we, which are open and available on our website. So again, studentsrunphilly.org is a great place to get started to learn more about it. Um, but we get race entries to other races in the area throughout the year. And then, um, you know, we hold usually a spring charity event and then a fall charity event. So all of that would be on our website. You can sign up for our newsletter and we can start sending that stuff out to you as well. How many do you have per year, charity events? Events, I'm gonna say we probably have about three or four big okay. events, but then um, opportunities to, to fundraise for the organization or to make donations kind of throughout. Great. Well, I wanna thank both of you for coming on the show. Thank I think you. you shared a lot of very good, important information, and I look forward to watching you <laughs> next year. That's right, Thanks look for, for some Broad us. Street, right? That's right, yes. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll try it this year. Mm -hmm. maybe, there maybe you go. Thanks. <laughs> coming up next, we will be talking with the student involved in Students Run Philly style. Stay tuned.
creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. Until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital dead walkers. Dude. They're not looking out for you. Engage. A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected Sorry. with strong, healthy bones. My name is Caitlin. I'm six years old. I like to go to the beach with my cousins. When I was a baby, I was very sick. And then I got a liver transplant from an organ donor. He saved my life. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Three, two, one, action. You may think a guy would produce, be producing this, but I can too. Anyone can find a cure. Women are being downgraded for their physical ability, but you can be just as strong. Twenty percent of women are engineers, but it doesn't stop there. I'm a tech girl. I'm a tech girl. I am a tech girl. I am a tech girl. Hi, Eddie Dunn here with LaSalle's favorite TV game show, Q&A. Do you know that LaSalle TV reaches over 300,000 homes in the Philadelphia area? Probably, right? Would you also know there's actually 13 Zodiac constellations and not 12? The 13th is called Ophiuchus. But we got rid of that one because it sounds dumb and also 13 is an unlucky number. So that's why we have 12. Where'd you learn that? LaSalle TV. Hello, and welcome back to Future Leaders in Philadelphia. I'm your host, Derek Sawyer. Today we're talking with the organization Students Run Philly Style. They are a program, a program that works with students to keep them healthy and challenge them to reach their full potential. Right now, please welcome a LaSalle freshman who is involved in Students Run Philly Style, Christina DeLulo. Christina, how are you? Good, thank you, how are you? Great, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So LaSalle, what yes. made you pick this out? Well, I attended Central, which was next right door. Right down the store. Oh. So I was familiar with LaSalle. Um, but what really appealed to me most uh, was the vast opportunities here. And um, I am a comm major. So I really liked the, nice. the different, uh, the flexibility of it. Um, so if you don't per se want one career, you can actually go into another. So um, I, I like that. I thought you were going to be a running major. Uh, on the side. On the uh, part-time? Part-time, gotcha. yes, yes, exactly. So how did you get involved with Philly Students Run Philly Style? Yes, so I was introduced to the organization through a former seventh grade teacher. Um, she actually, a group of students and I were actually intrigued by the way she described their organization and we were actually compelled to join. So um, since then, I've been a part of the organization uh, from transitioning and into high school and now college. So I've stuck with it for six years. Six years involved? That's yes. a long time. So. so describe the feeling, what's it like? Well, I, I love the organization so much. It, it has helped me in so many different ways and I'm so grateful to have been able to be a part of it. And now that I'm one of the older students, I get to sort of advise the kids that are below me and sort of help them through that transition as well and sort of be a guide for them. So not only have I had people to look up to, I, get, I try to aspire to be a person, right. a role model as well, so. Great, so yes. have you run a marathon? Not yet, I not plan, yet. I intend to run a full marathon next year within the next few years, but I've, I've stuck with the half marathons. So. Well, that's good too. So. So how many half marathons have you run? Um, this past year was my sixth half marathon. Six? Yes, so. Wow. Yes. So why did you stay involved with the program? Since once you got into LaSalle, what made you stay involved? Well, what made me stay involved in was with 
um, it's a way to sort of connect with my former schools. Um, my school Meredith, my middle school Meredith, um, and I sort of get to see how that changes through the organization right. and sort of help the kids there and sort of um, give them a guide to um, what high schools look into and, and college now as well, sort of. Um, so I, that's really the main reason why I've stood into it. Also the sense of community it has and Students Run has been like a family to me. So it's hard for me to say goodbye to it. I could never right. say goodbye to it. So, so what are some of the values that you've taken away from the program? Well, some of the main uh, values that Students Run instills in us students is courage, effort, and respect. And um, courage as in sort of giving us the ability to go after things and um, really not be so, so much in fear, um, fearful to actually go after the unknown and embrace right. it and sort of go after challenges and meet it head on. So, um, and effort as in putting in the motivation and determination Great. to go forward with that and to have respect for others and yes. Yes, well, so. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Hopefully one day I get my half marathon and then marathon. But until then, I look forward to you accomplishing your marathon. Thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. I'd like to thank all of our guests from Students Run Philly Style for being here. If you would like to find out more about the organization or get involved, visit studentsrunphillystyle.org. I'm your host, Derek Sawyer, and thanks for watching Future Leaders in Philadelphia where we believe investing in our youth is investing in our future.